Welcome to Auto Age. In the first half of 2022, China's contemporary Amperex Technology Company Limited CATL share in the global battery market increased significantly from 28% in the previous year to 34.8%. Meanwhile, second-ranked South Korean LG Energy Solutions slid sharply from 23.8% to 14.4%. According to data from SNS Research, South Korea's Samsung SDI fell from 5.8% to 4.9% during the same period, and South Korea's SK on rose from 5.3% to 6.5%, but even the three companies combined are only 25.8%, far behind the CATL. In fact, looking at the top 10 battery manufacturers, the market share of Chinese companies is also far ahead with 55.1%. South Korea followed with 25.8% and Japan with 9.6%. Therefore, in the face of the rise of China's battery industry, the United States felt uneasy again. Soon, the United States introduced the Inflation Reduction Act. It is a $7,500 electric vehicle tax credit that will be renewed in January 2023 for a 10-year period through the end of 2032. The point is that it has gone from supporting businesses to providing subsidies directly to consumers. Half of the $7,500 tax credit will be subsidized based on a percentage of core mineral sources and the other half will be subsidized based on a percentage of North American battery components used. In the future, specific smelting standards for 25 key minerals will be introduced. Simply put, from 2023 to 2027, a tax credit of $3,750 is available if you use at least 40% of battery core minerals mined in the U.S., or 80% of the battery's core minerals mined and smelted in countries that have free trade agreements with the U.S. Additionally, battery components manufactured and assembled in North America with 50% or more usage in 2023 and 100% usage in 2028 are eligible for a $3,750 tax credit. Of course, Chinese and Russian products are not included. If you want to sell electric vehicles in the U.S. market, you must use electric vehicles produced in North America and minerals mined from U.S. allies. So the United States wants to pass this ACT to curb the rise of China's battery industry. However, can America succeed? What impact has the enactment of the act had on the electric vehicle market so far? Does China have counter-sanctions? In this new energy vehicle battery battle, who will win between China and the United States? Well, that and more is exactly what we are going to talk about today. SNE research forecasts that the US EV battery market will grow at a compound annual growth rate of 63%, from 64 GWh in 2021 to 143 GWh in 2023 and 453 GWh in 2025. Since there are no battery manufacturers in the United States, South Korea's three largest battery manufacturers currently have the greatest opportunity if Chinese companies are excluded. However, considering that about 70% of the raw materials for battery cells produced by these three companies rely on China, this is not that easy. After the US policy was introduced, it accelerated the investment of auto companies and battery companies in the United States. First, Hyundai Motor Group has decided to build an electric vehicle plant in Georgia, where Kia Motors' U.S. plant is located, to speed up its 2025 startup plan. Construction is planned to start within the year to speed up production as much as possible. In addition, Volkswagen has signed a Memorandum of Understanding with Canada to supply electric vehicle battery components such as nickel and lithium. Volkswagen emphasized that the deal was aimed at shortening its supply chain and increasing U.S. sales. 
Mercedes-Benz, which already has a battery manufacturing plant in Georgia, plans to source 10,000 tons of battery-grade lithium from RockTech to help it achieve its all-electric portfolio goals after 2025. Moreover, Honda has partnered with LG Energy Solutions to invest $440 million in a new battery plant in the U.S. with an annual capacity of 40 GWh. The joint venture will be established within this year, construction will start in early 2023, and production will begin in 2025. Panasonic is considering investing $4 billion in the U.S. and building another battery factory. Panasonic Energy, a unit of Panasonic Holdings, announced in July that it would invest $4 billion to build a large battery factory in suburban Kansas City and build a new factory in Oklahoma. Not only that, Panasonic is supplying batteries for Tesla's Giga Nevada. The Kansas and Oklahoma factories are naturally expected to supply 4,680 cells to Tesla's Giga Texas. Toyota Motor Corp. has decided to invest up to 730 billion yen, $5.6 billion, in the U.S. and Japan, with a goal of producing batteries between 2024 and 2026. The investment aims to increase the combined capacity of the U.S. and Japan to 40 GWh. Besides, there are unconfirmed rumors that Tesla will also delay plans to produce batteries in Gruenheide, Germany, where the Giga Berlin is located. The Wall Street Journal and Reuters predict that if produced in North America, battery prices could drop by as much as 40% due to the Inflation Reduction Act. However, the CATL has formed a huge contrast with the above-mentioned enterprises. CATL has been revealed that it will go to the United States to build a factory to provide power batteries for Ford, Tesla, and other car companies. But there has been news that the company has decided to delay the announcement of the North American factory. Apparently, CATL delayed the North American factory plan. In fact, this can also be seen as a powerful counterattack of the U.S. Inflation Reduction Act against the CATL. There are currently about 11,000 lithium-ion battery companies in China, and more than 1,000 companies was registered in 2021. In addition, China's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology stated that the total output value of the battery industry in 2021 will exceed 600 billion yuan. Despite difficulties such as the COVID-19, the conflict between Russia and Ukraine, the rising price of raw materials including lithium-ion batteries, and the shortage of chips, research institutions and others expressed their optimism about the prospects of the new energy vehicle field this year. Analysts estimate that sales of new energy vehicles will reach at least 4 million this year. The China Association of Automobile Manufacturers expects that number to reach 5 million this year. However, facing such a good market, the three major Korean battery companies are hesitant to make additional investments in the Chinese market. The main reason is that the Chinese government uses lithium iron phosphate batteries as a detailed standard for subsidy payments to give priority to Chinese companies. Therefore, the three major battery companies in South Korea had to defect to the United States. All in all, it remains to be seen how effective the Biden administration's inflationary measures will be. However, on the surface alone, it seems natural for Korean automakers and battery makers to expand production in the United States. So far, data show the new policy has added about 642,000 manufacturing jobs to the U.S. economy. Global automakers are racing to build electric vehicles in the U.S creating jobs in the U.S. For the U.S. president, it is very favorable and will create favorable conditions for President Biden's midterm elections. And the competition between China and the U.S. for the battery industry continues. Okay, that's all for today. Please put your comments below, 
and share your insightful ideas with other people. Do you want to learn about more auto stories? Please keep following our channel and like our videos. Thank you so much for your continuous support. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. See you. Oh, 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 oh,